This is Barbara Johns. I'm an art historian, author, and former museum curator. My work for the past 15 years has focused on Issei, or immigrant generation Japanese American artists. In the next three weeks, I'll tell you about three Seattle Issei artists who were well known before the war. All were incarcerated at Minidoka and left records of their experience. Kamikichi Tokita, whose painting is at left, Takuichi Fuji in the center, and Kenjiro Nomura at the right. This first week is about Kenjiro Nomura. Nomura's work may look familiar to some of you, for it's been used for the covers of several books about the incarceration. 30 years ago, Nomura's son George brought the art, artwork from the war years out of storage, where it was first presented at the Wing Loop Museum in Seattle and at many other places to follow. In 2013, George and his wife Betty donated the collection to the Tacoma Art Museum, where it is held in safekeeping for public access. Nomura was born in Gifu, Japan in 1896 and came to Tacoma, Washington at the age of 10. When he was 16, his parents and their American-born children returned to Japan, leaving Nomura on his own. Within two years, he had moved to Seattle. From a young age, he had a drive and exceptional talent for art. He's pictured on the left in his early 20s, painting on a field trip in the mountains. He left photographs, but no letters, diary, or other written record. His story lies in his artwork. He made his living as a sign painter. He and Tokita were business partners, as well as fellow artists. Their shop, Noto Sign Company, was in the center of Seattle's Nihomachi. Their shop served as their place of business, their studio, and a gathering place for Nikkei artists. Sunday was their day off from work and the day for field trips. Below, Nomura stands at the easel at right and Fujii is seated on the ground, in a photograph very likely taken by Tokita. This is the kind of painting that won Nomura acclaim and opportunities to show his work nationally as well as regionally. This painting, Puget Sound, was shown at the Museum of Modern Art in 1933, when Nomura was one of six artists chosen to represent Seattle and the only Issei in the national exhibition. The view is directly across the street from the sign shop. Many of his paintings and those of his colleagues were in the immediate neighborhood of the shop. Nomura's were praised for their exceptional clarity of light. On their Sunday field trips, the artists sometimes painted in the Green River and White River Valley south of Seattle. Before the war, as many as 70% of the farms in the valley were operated by Nikkei families. Nomura's farm scenes are rhythmically patterned, richly colored pastoral landscapes. But with the onset of war and President Franklin Roosevelt's issuance of Executive Order 9066, Nomura and his family became numbers in the mass exclusion. This is the temporary detention site at Puyallup, 30 miles south of Seattle. Note the image on the right. And here is Nomura's version. Unlike his somewhat timeless city and farm scenes, his paintings of Piolup are filled with people, reflecting his new environment and the need to record what is around him. Here are the kitchen workers and garbage cans marked with A, the section in which Nomura lived. In his view of the main gate, Nomura shows young Nisei passing time in the enforced leisure. They're identifiable as the young generation by their dress and postures. A soldier stands with his back to the gate. Even in these scenes, Nomura's love of color seems irrepressible. Other paintings are darker, as in Guard Tower at night, where searchlights continually scanned the barracks, and in the other, a man hunches against the weather on a dark, wet 
day. Numura and his family were sent from Pialup to Min Minidoka the 1st of September, 1942. He was employed in the camp as a sign painter. The army specified the size, placement, and wording of signs for the camp's perimeter, while others were signs were planned internally. Here we see one of the perimeter signs in a small pocket-sized sketchbook kept by Numura. In the first six months, the sign painting crew produced more than 5,000 signs. Numura's first dated paintings of Minidoka are January 1943, during an exceptionally cold winter. The snowy, gently rolling landscape is scarred by the guard tower and the fence that stretches out of sight. Several paintings that winter and the next picture camp scenes or the open landscape. Weather was experienced intimately in the primitive environment of camp and becomes a feature of numerous paintings and drawings. Some, like the ruby sunset, are as small as three by four inches, but with a larger presence. Unlike P. Yallop, his paintings of Minidoka typically are without people, or at most, one or two figures are diminished by the landscape. This painting puzzled me for a long time. The beams of sunshine and the voluptuously patterned landscape made it appear inexplicably bright, almost hopeful. I've realized, however, that skies like these are a common desert phenomenon and that Nomura was true to what he saw, just as his paintings of the 1930s had shown Northwest skies. More importantly, and looking closely, the small figure on the road is a soldier with a rifle, a revealing sign of the desert prison. Numura made large and small paintings, precise drawings, and loose sketches at Minidoka using oil paint, watercolor, pencil, and crayon, any materials at hand. Most of the drawings and sketches have no counterpart in paintings. Here is a large detailed drawing of his barracks block. Two small sketch images show his barrack and the making of a home out of the stark building. Gardens begin to grow, and on the right, a jug of soy sauce and a rice pot identify the home as Japanese American. Nothing, however, conveys the passage of time more than two photographs of the family, Kenjiro, his wife Fumiko, and their son George. Look how George has grown and imagine the passage of three years of their desert confinement. Although the Minidoka paintings rarely fe feature people, a number of sketches and the small watercolor show inmates at work. The pea fields pictured here lay just outside Numura's barrack. Clearing the rocky sagebrush land, digging irrigation ditches, often by hand, planting and harvesting were laborious undertakings. Numura pictures the results of the Nikkei's efforts in this rhythmic landscape of golden fields and a portrait of the root cellar, which still, still stands today. The largest and one of the last of Nomura's Minidoka paintings is titled Gymnasium, the white building in the background. The painting celebrates the completion of the gymnasium and auditorium building, which had been long desired by the community and was completed only after great difficulty. And yet the painting is also a story of coal, which is piled in front. The man leans over the pile and the woman balances the weight of her bucket with an, her arm out extended. Coal was at, at times in acute shortage and the job of hauling coal caused frequent labor disputes. It's interesting that Nomura combines the two themes in this large celebratory painting. And it's a reminder that there are more than layers of meaning in his art 
than what may initially appear. A final example of Numero's work at Minidoka is the honor roll, which he and Tokita designed and painted, and which bears the name of the Nisei men and women who left Minidoka to serve in the army. On the right, Nomura pictures Tokita, adding names to the sign in 1944. An iconic American eagle centers the top, and at its base is a Japanese-style ceremonial garden designed by Minidoka's head gardener, Fujitaro Kubota, who had been a renowned nurseryman in Seattle and the builder of Kubota Garden. American and Japanese, Ise and Nisei, the sign is a powerful, bicultural, intergenerational testament to Japanese-American loyalty. After the war, Nomura returned to Seattle and in time regained artistic recognition with a new body of abstract painting. He died in 1956, still with new ideas to explore. What you've seen today is from my forthcoming book about Nomura, which will accompany an exhibition in 2021. I want to acknowledge the support of Four Culture, King County's cultural funding agency, during the research and preparation of the book. Please join me next week for a look at the remarkable wartime artistic project of Takuichi Fuji. Thank you.